If you only knew the power of the dark side. It's crazy hot in that thing. So what's with all this theatrical? Well, today we are going to take example on the dark side. And by the dark side, I mean Android, of course. Today, I want to show you a very popular library on Android to make network calls. So this library is called Retrofit. And what's really great with this library is that, as you can see, well, when you want to make a network call, all you have to do is write the signature of the function that would implement the network call. Then you're going to annotate this signature using annotation provided by the library. And the great feature of Retrofit is that then, using this signature and the annotation, where the library is going to be able to dynamically generate the code to make the network call. So that's really the great feature. You only have to write the signature of the function and its body is automatically generated from you using the information provided in the signature through the annotations. Now on Swift, we don't really have an equivalent to this library. And there are actually some good reasons for it. And the first one is that, well, up until recently, there were no supports for annotation in Swift. This support only came two years ago with property wrappers. And what I want to show you today is that using property wrappers and the mirror API to do some introspection at runtime, well, it's actually possible to make a library that will work in a similar fashion to Retrofit, except that this library will actually rely on Swifty features like protocol oriented programming. So let's get started. To begin, I'm going to write by hand the kind of code that we would like to automate through this new library. So I'm going to paste in the code of a data request. So as you can see, this is the code that would generate the HTTP request to make a network call. And you can see that there is some state in this struct. So first we have a path. As you can see, the path is a let constant because every instance is going to share the same path. And then this path can be parameterized using the other properties of the struct. So here we have the group ID that would substitute a value for the template ID, which is present in the path. And we have the sort argument will be provided as a query string argument. So to go along with these properties, I'm going to have also an init. As you can see, in the init, I only provide a group ID and the sort because the path is a constant that is the same for all possible instances. And then we're actually going to have to make the network call. And in order to keep things simple for this video, I'm actually not going to go up to the point where we actually make the network call, but I'm only going to focus on how to generate the URL that we must call given the arguments. So here, as you can see, to generate the URL, I use a compute property called request URL. URL. And as you can see, I'm going to compose the URL step by step using what has been provided in the values in the state of my struct. So I start with a base URL, which is the base URL of my API. Then I'm going to evaluate my path, meaning that I take the path and then I'm going to replace the template arguments with their actual value. Then I'm going to build my full URL by concatenating the base URL with the evaluated path. And then finally, from this full URL, as you can see, I am constructing an object of type URL component it's a helper object in foundation that is going to allow me to easily add query argument to the URL. So then on this URL components, I'm going to set the property query items. And as you can see, it's an array of query item and the query item is an argument with a name and a value. And so it's an argument that will be placed in the query string of the URL. And so I'm actually going to paste in some code that will create an instance of get user request and then attempt to generate the URL. And as you can see, indeed, when I run my code, I get the URL that I expect. Okay, so now it's time to refactor this code with the end goal of actually being able to generate the body of this compute property automatically. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is to create two property wrappers that are going to allow me to annotate the variables here, group ID and sort. And the idea is that in this property wrapper, I will be able to both store the value of the property, but also the name of the argument. So ID here and sort there. So in order to implement this property wrapper, I have created a new file and I'm going to paste in the code for the first property wrapper. So as you can see, it's a property wrapper to store a path argument. As you can see inside the property wrapper, I am storing two pieces of information. So the first one is the name of the argument. You can see that I've declared it as a let constant because indeed there is no reason for this value to change once the property wrapper has been initialized. And the second one is the actual value of the argument. And this one is a var because of course I must be 
available to update the value over time. Then you can see I have created an init where I provide the name. Then I have a wrap value, which is actually just a way to get and set the value stored here in the value property. And then finally, we have a projected value. So if you've never used a projected value, it's something that you can get by prefixing your variable with the dollar sign. And you're going to see me use it just in a few minutes. And as you can see, in this projected value, I return a tuple which contains both the name and the value. So all the information that we need in order to encode the argument inside the URL. And as you can imagine, the second property wrapper that will this time represent a query argument is going to be very similar. So I'm going to paste in its code also. And as you can see, it's actually almost the same thing. The only difference is that this time for the projected value, well, instead of returning a tuple, I'm actually returning a URL query item because there is actually a type in foundation whose goal is to represent an argument that must be encoded in the query string of an URL. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to update my previous code to use these two new property wrappers. So I'm going to select my two properties. And as you can see, now I am using my property wrappers, add path argument and add query argument. And in their init, so here, I am providing each time the name of the argument. And now that this information is encoded in the property wrappers, well, in my code to actually generate the URL, what I can do is that I can actually remove all of the hard-coded strings. And instead of using the hard-coded string, now I can get the name of the argument by using the projected value of the property wrapper that, as you can see, I am accessing using the dollar character. So now I'm going to do the same for the second argument. And as you can see, I'm also going to fix the mistake that was there because here I had mistakenly hard coded the value. Of course, what I wanted to do was to do this, but I made a mistake, sorry for that. And so using the same logic than above, I'm going to change this hard coded value for the name of the argument. And I'm going to do dollar sort dot name. And what's super nice now is that if we take a look at this code, we can see that there are no longer any hard-coded information about the argument. Okay, so we are halfway there. Now what's left to do is that I actually must take this implementation. I must factor it out in a type that will allow me to actually have this code be automatically generated for any type that uses this property wrapper in order to implement the argument of the URL it wants to generate. So in order to do this, I'm going to introduce a new protocol. I'm going to call it HTTP requestable. As you can see, it has a requirement that there must be a path declared in the type that conforms to this protocol. So what I'm also going to do is that I'm going to make my code here also conform to the protocol. And then I'm going to take the code I use to generate the request URL. I'm going to cut it and I'm actually going to paste it in an extension to the protocol HTTP requestable. By doing this, as you can see, now I have some compilation error and it makes sense because in my code, I am still using group ID and sort. And of course, they were values of get user data request, but they don't exist in the context of HTTP requestable. And this is where I'm going to use the mirror API in order to dynamically discover which properties of my type that implements the protocol HTTP requestable actually use the property wrapper path argument and query argument. So first, I'm going to create my mirror that reflects my instance, and then I'm going to take care of this line right here. And so here is the code where I'm able to automatically deal with the path arguments. As you can see, using the children property of the mirror, which is going to list all of the properties of my instance, I'm going to iterate over this array. Then using this iflet, I'm going to filter only for the properties that are instances of a path argument. And then finally, using the argument name and the value provided I did while I'm going to update my evaluated path. Then, as you can imagine, I'm going to do the same thing for the query items. So as you can see here, the logic is the same. Using the mirror, I iterate over all of the properties of the instance. Then with an iflet, I filter to only get the properties that are instances of query argument. And finally, using the query argument, well, I append the query item to my array of query items. And at the end of the for loop, well, I'm going to use this array in order to update my URL components. And finally, I only need to get the URL corresponding to my URL component to return and reach the end of my function. And that's it. I've actually written all the code that I need to write. So now it's time to execute my program and hope I haven't made any mistake along the way. So let's see what's going to happen. So good news, I managed not to make a mistake. And so as you can see, my URL has been generated, is the same value 
than before, which is what I wanted. As you can see, both kind of arguments have indeed been embedded inside UL. So here we have the path argument and here the query argument. And what's super nice when we take a look at the code is that this time our struct, it only has to conform to this protocol HTTP requestable. And then we only have to annotate our arguments using the property wrappers path argument and query argument. And we get for free this request URL compute property where our code is able to use the mirror API in order well to iterate at runtime over the properties of the struct and to dynamically build the corresponding URL using the data provided in the property wrappers. So this is an interesting approach. And the reason why I wanted to show it to you is because, well, as you can imagine, it can be useful for many other things than generating a URL. Basically, every time that you have some boilerplate code that is used in order to generate some representation of your data, well, there might be a way that you could factor out this boilerplate code using property wrappers and the mirror API. And what I find really nice with this approach is that we are able to remove a lot of boilerplate code without the need to introduce any third party code generation tool. We are able to do everything in Swift using the mirror API. So this is the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to experiment with the code that I've shown you, well, as always, there is a link to get the code in the description. If you're intrigued by this approach and you have some ideas on how it could be applied, well, please let me know in the comment. If you have some colleagues that could also benefit from this technique, please share the video with them. And as always, well, thank you for watching this video and see you next time.